Imagine waking up one day and realizing the belly fat you've carried for years is actually a backup battery your body has been clinging to. Just like the 73% of Americans who store far more energy than they can burn. Imagine shutting off the food supply and forcing that battery to drain, hour by hour, until there's nothing left to power you. Now imagine what happens next, when your body has to choose between survival mode and shutdown mode because there's no more fat to pull from. This isn't a detox, a diet, or a trend. It's a biological stress test your ancestors faced, but you never have. And the moment your fat reserves start running out, your hormones, brain, and organs begin reacting in ways you're absolutely not prepared for. So imagine fasting long enough to hit that point and ask yourself whether your body adapts or starts to break. Over time, that belly battery doesn't just sit there. It quietly disrupts hormones, blood sugar, and metabolic timing in ways most people never feel until it's too late. Doctors call it metabolic drift, but in real life it feels like fatigue, stubborn weight, and cravings that won't quit. It's like carrying a power pack that drains you instead of fueling you. But here's the hope. Fasting can reverse some of this surprisingly fast. And the first few days reveal changes most people never expect. The moment you stop eating, your body doesn't panic. It just looks around like, okay, <laughs> so we're really doing this. For the first 12 to 24 hours, it burns through glycogen, the quick success sugar your liver keeps for emergencies that never actually happen. According to research in cell metabolism, most people empty this tank in a day, which explains why the first phase of fasting feels less like spiritual enlightenment and more like, why does everyone smell like food? But this is where chemistry starts shifting. Insulin drops finally, like a boss who leaves the office and suddenly everyone can breathe again. Low insulin is the golden ticket that tells your body, all right, open the fat vault. Once you cross into the 24 to 72 hour zone, your metabolism flips into fat burning mode with the smoothness of a hybrid car switching to electric. Your liver starts turning fat into ketones, which your brain uses like premium fuel. People report clearer thinking and it's not placebo. Studies from the Journal of Physiology show ketones create less inflammation and more stable energy. So if glucose is like burning crumpled receipts, ketones are like burning clean, hard wood, steady, slow, and oddly satisfying. Meanwhile, visceral fat, the deep belly fat wrapped around your organs, gets dragged into the spotlight. Research suggests it's stubborn at first, almost offended you're trying to burn it, but fasting gives it no choice. You're not nibbling every three hours anymore, so your body finally has to tap into the fat stores it's been hoarding like a paranoid squirrel. Around days three to seven, your body stops negotiating and starts optimizing. This is where autophagy kicks in, the cellular cleanup routine that won a Nobel Prize. Imagine your cells pulling out trash bags, throwing away misfolded proteins, and scrubbing things that haven't been cleaned since you ate your first Pop-Tart as a child. <laughs> a study in Nature shows autophagy skyrockets after 48 hours, which helps explain why fasters often say they feel lighter. Not in a woo-woo spiritual way, but in a my-body-isn't-digesting 24-7 kind of way. Growth hormone also goes through the roof, up to 400% according to clinical endocrinology. GH basically tapes a do not disturb sign on your muscles so your body burns fat, not biceps. And emotionally? People describe this phase like a weird superpower. Calmer mood, less bloating, clearer thinking. Turns out your gut really appreciates the break. Between days 7 and 14, things get even more interesting. Your mitochondria, the tiny engines in your cells, start multiplying like they've been promoted. Research from the University of Alabama shows fasting boosts mitochondrial efficiency, meaning your body becomes better at turning fat into energy. It's like upgrading from an old laptop that overheats to a brand new one that actually works. Blood pressure drops, inflammation cools off, and your heart starts acting like you've been doing cardio even though you've just been trying not to think about pizza. People at this stage often report a bizarre sense of peace, 
part biology, part I've survived a week without snacks, I can do anything. Cravings shrink because ghrelin, the hunger hormone, stops expecting meals at your old schedule. By week two, many fasters forget about breakfast altogether. Yes, really. But what about when belly fat gets low? That's where the plot thickens. Fat is your long-term fuel, the backup generator. So when you start running low, your thyroid steps in like a nervous parent and slows metabolism to conserve energy. A study from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition shows T3, the active thyroid hormone, drops during extended fasting. Your body also begins breaking down a bit more protein, not because it hates muscle, but because some cells need glucose and protein can be converted when the pantry is empty. This stage feels like battery saver mode, less warmth, slower workouts, and a general sense of, maybe I should sit down. It's your biology saying, we're fine, but maybe let's not push this into documentary territory. Real-world fasters describe this phase as functional but not fun. You can think clearly, but the spark is dimmer. You can move, but you'd prefer not to. And this is where every clinical fasting expert from Walter Longo at USC to the researchers in the Buchinger Wilhelmi studies draws a line. The goal is never to burn all your belly fat. The goal is to reset your metabolic signal system, not reenact a survival movie. The amazing part? You don't have to get anywhere near the low-fat reserve stage to see huge benefits. Most of the magic insulin drops, ketosis, autophagy, fat burning, mental clarity, happens early and happens reliably. Even daily fasting windows like 16-8, 18-6, or OMAD deliver noticeable changes. A 2020 study in JAMA Network found that time-restricted eating alone reduces abdominal fat and improves insulin sensitivity, regardless of calorie intake. Translation, you don't need a 10-day water fast to reboot your system. You just need to stop eating constantly. So the real lesson isn't fast until your belly fat runs out. The real lesson is what your body does the moment you stop feeding it non-stop. It shifts gear. It repairs, it switches fuel sources, it cleans house, it becomes efficient again. And once you feel that switch, when energy steadies, cravings calm down, and your brain finally stops fogging, you realize something wild. Maybe you didn't need more food. Maybe you just needed more empty space for your metabolism to breathe. And fasting teaches you something most of us forget. Your body is way more capable than your habits suggest. When you stop eating on autopilot, you finally hear what your metabolism has been trying to tell you for years. You don't need constant food to function. You need consistency, intention, and a little breathing room. That first step, whatever size you choose, can change everything. Not because it's extreme, but because it finally puts you back in the driver's seat. So, if any part of this made you rethink how you eat, try a small fasting window and see how your body responds. <laughs> and if you want more clear, realistic health breakdowns like this, hit like so YouTube knows and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Tell me in the comments what fasting myth you want me to crack open next. Your health doesn't shift in one day, but it does shift the moment you decide to start.